Hi everybody, I'm Carol Ann and I'm the program coordinator for McDowell Farm School and we are going to talk about milking goats today. Um, so as you can see out here are part of our herd. Um, this right here is Lil Vern um, and Lil Vern is the kid of this black doe in the back and her name is Veronica and she's a Nubian. Um, right here in front of her is Nix and she is a Nubian over Hosley Cross. And then if you look back here, this is Queenie. She is one of our newest additions and she is also a Nubian. And back here is Ruby and Ruby is a Sanin. All three of these breeds are really great milking does and uh, they have different characteristics which make their milk and their personalities a little bit different. Um, so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna meet Lola who is the doe that we're gonna be milking today. So we are in our milking parlor right now, um, and this is Lola. This is the goat that we're going to be milking today, and she is an alpine over Hosley, and she's about five years old. Um, a large part of milking is the steps that you take beforehand. So it's getting the goat ready, it's getting all of your equipment together, making sure that everything is clean and sanitized, and then finally milking at the end, and then afterwards there's a cleanup process as well. So we are going to start with getting our goat ready. Um, and here at the farm school, there is a very specific way that we do that. Uh, we have some um, cleaning equipment over here on the shelf. So the first thing that we do is we brush our goat. We do this to make sure that no hairs or large particles of dirt or dust fall into our milking pail. we take this thicker bristly brush and we brush off our stanchion. And the stanchion is what this stand is called. Our goats are used to being fed up here, so they jump up pretty quickly. Lastly in here, we are going to spray down her teats with this iodine spray. This is just a disinfectant and uh, just to make sure that everything is clean. So what we'll do with this is we'll spray and make sure that this is covering the whole surface of the teats. And now it's time for us to wash hands. That is possibly the most important step of milking, is making sure that our hands are clean, making sure that we are not going to get her sick or get anything into our milk so that no one else gets sick. All right, so now we are going to assemble our milking equipment. We keep all of our things in a very specific location in our refrigerator. Uh, we also keep our paper towels in here, and that's just to make sure that they don't get dirty with all of the dust and things in the air in the barn. Um, we keep our milking pails up here on the top rack, and beneath those, we keep our jars of milk. Uh, we keep our jars of milk on the bottom just so that any um, milk doesn't drip down onto the milking pails and they stay clean and sanitized. And then we keep our clean jars in the freezer up here. This paper towel is going to be used to wipe off the iodine spray that we sprayed on Lola's teeth. So we are finally ready to start milking our goat. Um, the first thing we're going to do is wipe off the iodine that we sprayed. And when we do this, we want to make sure that we are keeping the sides of the paper towel separate. And that's because her udder is actually two separate chambers. So she could have an infection on one side of the udder and it would not be on the other side. And next, this is called our strip cup. Before we start milking into our sanitized pail, we want to get a few squirts of milk into this cup to make sure that the milk is clean and healthy. Um, and this way we can detect if there are any chunks or discoloration in the milk. And as you can see, it looks like milk. So the method that we use for milking 
maybe a little different than what you might have seen uh, in movies or TV. Uh, it's not a pull down motion, it is actually a pinch and squeeze motion. So imagine that this is a balloon and you're gonna trap off this section right here and squeeze and make sure it's nice and tight up here. And then you're going to slowly roll down the rest of your fingers and push the milk out. So one really important thing we wanna keep in mind when we're milking is that we don't want the milk to shoot back up into the udder. We wanna trap it here and let it come down. So a couple of common questions that we get at the farm school from our kids that come visit. Um, a lot of them want to know, why do goats have milk? Why do we milk goats? Um, goats are mammals, so all mammals produce milk to feed their babies. So in order for us to even have milk, that means that our goats have to get pregnant and have kids every year. And as you can imagine, that puts quite a lot of stress on their bodies. So because of that, we want to make sure that we are feeding them the appropriate feed, um, giving them appropriate dietary supplements like alfalfa hay um, or any other supplements that they may need, that we're giving them lots of clean forage out in the pasture, and that they have as happy lives as possible. So here at the farm, we have four milking goats right now, and that means that in our prime milking season when we're milking our goats twice a day, we get lots of milk. Um, when we are milking them all, um, we can get up to two gallons of milk or even more every day. So that means we have to find something to do with all of that milk. So a couple of things that we do at the farm, well first of all we drink it, we also use it to make cheese, we use it to make soap, and we use it to make a variety of other dairy products, such as yogurt or ice cream, goat milk caramel, pretty much anything you can imagine. When we are making these things um, with our milk, one thing that we do want to keep in mind is uh, how long those are going to last. So just our regular milk um, and our soft cheese, which is called a chevre, which you may find in grocery stores, is going to have the shortest shelf life. So we want to actually think of other ways that we can use to preserve the milk as long as possible. And we've been trying to come up with different ways to do this. Um, we've been making hard cheeses and waxing and aging them, um, soap. And you can also freeze certain types of our products as well to make them last even longer. Another common question that we get from children that come through the farm school is, does this hurt her? Um, as far as we can tell, no, it does not hurt her. Um, she's used to being in the stand, and as you can see, she has some room to move her head around in here. Um, and actually, milking feels good to her. So when her udder is full, it's gonna be a tight feeling for her, which is gonna make her uncomfortable. So this feeling of being milked is actually going to relieve some of that stress and the tension of the weight of the milk in her udder. So a lot of us here are used to drinking cow's milk at home. So often we get questions about what is the difference between goat's milk and cow's milk and why do we choose to have goats instead of cows? Um, one main reason that we have goats instead of cows is because goats are smaller and that means they need less land than cows and they have less of an environmental impact. Um, as far as the differences in their milk, um, there are a lot of differences. Um, Goat's milk is what we call homogenized, and that means that the fat particles are smaller and have a larger surface area than the fat particles in cow's milk. And because of that, that means that the cream does not separate in goat's milk like it does in cow's milk. It's also easier to digest. Goat's milk has a smaller amount of lactose than cow's milk, which means that for people that are sensitive to lactose, goat's milk might be a better option for them. Another interesting thing that happens during our milking season is that, as you can tell by looking around in your yards, in your backyards, the forage starts to change. So leaves start to change, what's available out in the pasture starts to change, and that means that the forage that our goats are eating is different in the fall than it is in the spring. And that actually has an effect on the taste of the milk as well. 
So a lot of you that buy or eat goat cheese from the store, um, there is a pretty distinctive flavor that you may notice. And that actually is, that flavor does not happen in the early spring months or when you're eating fresh goat cheese, you are not gonna get that flavor until the later fall months. And the reason that you get that flavor in cheese that you buy at the store is because of preservatives that they use and it actually ages that cheese a little bit and gives it that distinctive flavor. So at our farm, we practice dam raising, which means that we don't wean our kids until they are beginning to nibble at grass, which is after about three weeks. So after the kids are born, for those first three weeks, we keep them with their mothers. And uh, that means that the kids are actually drinking the milk and we are not getting to save that milk. Um, once we start to wean them, we um, it's partial. So we'll keep them separated at night and we'll milk our does in the mornings. So finally, after about six to eight weeks of that, we will fully wean the kids and separate them. And once that happens, that means we're milking all of our goats twice a day. Um, their production will go up uh, in the spring and uh, it starts to drop down a little bit after those spring months into the summer and the fall. All right, so we have finished milking Lola. And the final step is that we are going to spray her teats with this fight back solution. And it is disinfectant to prevent any bacterial infections that may occur in the udder. Alright, we're going to take our milk and we are going to put it in a clean sanitized jar and put it in the refrigerator. And finally, we're going to measure the amount of milk that we get and record that just so we can make sure to keep track of their production over our milking months. So each of these jars has eight cups. So that means just from that one goat, we got 12 cups of milk. That's a lot of milk. So we are going to label these jars with the date and uh, the time that we milk them, either a.m. or p.m and then we'll put them in the refrigerator and use them later. Thank you all so much for joining me today while I milked Lola. I had a great time, and if you have any questions or wanna know anything more, please make a comment in the video section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. We really miss having you all out here and hope to see you with us again soon.